What's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So, so far this week has been pretty dry, uneventful, and not that much to talk about. But there is this one thing that I saw, I think it was yesterday or this morning, I'm losing track of time, um, that I found pretty interesting that I wanted to talk about and, and discuss. And it's someone from IGN. I couldn't figure out who it was. I was trying to uh, research and figure out who, who the person was that actually said this. And I'm going to play the audio in a second so everybody can hear so I don't mince his words and everything like that. Um, couldn't find it. But he was essentially explaining why IGN gives, when they're reviewing games, why they give so many games sevens. It's like a running joke, you know, oh, I, they give they do give a lot of games sevens and people always wonder why. Right. And he explains it in a in a video. I think it was like a TikTok almost. I think it was like from IGN's TikTok. Um, and it's been deleted since because he's been getting flamed for it. But I actually agree with what he said. Um, so I'm just going to play the audio and listen to listen to it with all of you. So. Let's check out what he said. Why does IGN give so many sevens? Okay, let's talk about this. It boils down to the things we choose to review. Let me ask you this. How many games do you think were released in 2022? I don't know, like 200 or 300? Not even close. There were over 10,000 <laughs> games that came out on Steam in 2022. Dude, I don't even think I could name that many games, period. Exactly. There's no way that IGN can review all those games. So we try to focus our attention on the games that people actually care about. And we figure this out by a lot of different factors, like how many views the trailer got if we think it looks cool if it's trending on google if it has a lot of players on steam i could go on but then why are the scores always a seven or above so if people are actually interested in the game and it looks good most of the time it ends up being good which is our definition of a seven seven means good of course there are exceptions gotham knights but think about it this way if you've never heard of the game we probably wouldn't review it and it probably isn't that good anyway that's a really good explanation i give that explanation a seven no so people are taking what he said, and I believe they're misinterpreting it uh, in multiple ways, right? Number one, they're taking what he said and misinterpreting it um, as if he's saying that IGN reviews games um, and gives game scores based on how popular they are. That's not what he's saying. That's not what he said directly. And we obviously know that's true. I mean, if you just look at the, the games that IGN reviews, and you look at the most popular ones, um, obviously there's no correlation between review scores, uh, the review that they give a game and the popularity of it. You can, you can look at that. They give, there's some of the most popular games they've give, given seven or eights, and there's been some less popular games that, they, that they've given nines. And by the way, this is not to defend IGN. I, I can't give a fuck about IGN. I'm just uh, about to lay out why I actually mostly agree with what he's saying so no he's not saying that they give game scores based on uh, uh based on popularity he did directly say and obviously this makes sense this is what everybody fucking does in in, in uh in video games media and publication he says they choose what game to review based on popularity based on how many re reviews uh, based on how many views the trailer gets and, and the metrics and everything like that which obviously makes sense because when there's 10,000 games that come out every damn year there's no way any of these sites can review everything. Everybody reviews the most popular games for the most part. That's not just IGN, right? But his, his last sentence, his last quote, is, I believe is what he's getting the, the most pushback for. Um, is, and it's when he said, if you never heard of the game, we probably wouldn't review it. And it probably isn't that good anyway. Now, the key word there is probably, right? That's a problematic sentence. And I guess I get why he's push why he's getting a lot of pushback uh from that but it's kind of true and let me explain what i mean right like prob when you talk about pro probably you're talking about like numbers right literally the the probability of something if you take those 10,000 games that released on steam a year right and you if somebody were at, were to actually play those games more times out of not more times than not the games that you've never heard of are honestly not going to be that good. They're not. There, there's, there, there's so much bullshit that comes out, that comes out in, in gaming now because any damn near, like game, the game development is, is way more 
accessible than it ever was. So you take those 10,000 games on Steam, right? And let's say somebody were to actually play these, right? The majority of those games are going to be fucking garbage. That's, that's just not debatable. That's an, that's an absolute fact. If you go through all the games that you've never heard of, you know, page 500, 500, uh, you know, in, the, in, in Steam, most of those games are going to be bad. That, that's a fact. I don't know how anybody can, can dispute that. Now, of course, it's, it's, it's subjective, what, you know, what's bad and, and what's good. But, but in general speaking, yeah, most, most games in general are, are garbage. It's really, all, it's really only a few, the, 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 percent, the small percentage of games that are actually good that are released. And, and that's not only with, with games, that's with like any type of medium. Probably the only, like when it comes, anybody can make, you know, music is more accessible now. Um, even, even movies are more accessible now. You can argue that most of the movies that you've seen, even the ones you've seen that you've heard of, are probably not that good. And the ones that you've never heard of are probably fucking worse. And there's kind of a reason why you've never heard of them. Now, of course, different things factor into that, such as, you know, if, if they have a marketing budget and, and most of them don't have a marketing budget um, because they don't have like a publisher and they don't have that money. So yes, that factors in to, that of course factors into you hearing about a, ga about, about a game, right? But here's the thing, game trailers that have a lot of views tend to be the games that people are most interested in. Why are they most interested in them, right? They are most interested in them because those are the best looking games. And I'm not only talking about visuals, I'm talking about actual gameplay. So it's a very solid argument to say that the games that have the most views those are the games that the general public and gamers are choosing to be like the top prospects, the, the, the possible cream of the crops. With your eyes going to that game, and like I said, I know factor, you know, a pub, you know, if you have a publisher and marketing budget, all that factors into it. But generally speaking, we are voting with our eyes and, and, with, and with, our, with our views and what we give it. So if you believe the cream rises to the crop, and I believe most people actually do believe that, even as an indie game with no budget, a, a lot of shit rises to, to the top and like kind of breaks through that ceiling. So yes, views and attention are kind of like the process of elimination for games before, before like it, it reaches to that, that, um, that level where it's going to get reviewed by a publication. So I think that's kind of true. Are there hidden gems that we've never heard of? Of course, that happens. But that's the exception and, and not the rule. That generally, not everything is a, it's called the hidden gem for a reason. Because not, because it, it's a rarity. Because it's not commonplace. So yeah, most games are not, not going to be good. Game trailers have, you know, have the most views because that's what people tend to be the most interested in because they are saying uh th they are saying this is what looks looks the best as a game right so yeah i can i don't really see what people are what people are are mad about because if you really disagree when was the last time you went to like steam and you just decided to like look through random games that you've never heard of and like, oh, I'm going to give this, I've never heard of this game. I, I just found it just looking through some random list and I'm going to try it out. Nobody really fucking does that. Nobody does that. And the reason nobody does that is because whether or not you consciously believe it or not, you believe, you don't do that because you believe if a game is worthwhile talking about or even playing, it eventually will come across your eyes. It eventually will rise to the top and you will, you will know about it one way or another. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come to your attention eventually if it's actually that good and worth your time. Otherwise, you would be 
going through and, 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 you know, filtering through all the games that release per year. But, you know, you know, that's actually dumpster diving. That's what it is. Going through Steam's pages of games, that's dumpster diving. Now, that's you may not say that outright. Most people won't admit that. But that's what you're that's what you unconsciously believe. You're dumpster diving. So that's why you're not going to do it. Instead, most of us just wait for shit to pop up on a on a YouTube page, um, a game trailer to pop up on a YouTube page. Uh, most of us wait for it to come across uh, on on Twitter because we believe somebody on Twitter, if it's worthwhile, somebody on Twitter is, is going to bring it up, post a trailer, whether it be uh, just another fucking gamer or a or one of these companies or or publications. One of them will post it. And that's what we depend on because we believe in the process. That's that's a fact. You believe in the process and you use the process. So kind of hating on the process when you use it, when you're a part of it, is kind of like dumb to me. And I think a lot of people are kind of just being contrarians and, and kind of hating on IGN. And listen, there's a lot of reasons to hate on IGN. Fucking pick one, right? But I'm just saying this, this one is kind of a reach. It's kind of a reach. Once again, I know the if you've never heard of a game, we probably wouldn't review it. And it probably isn't that good. The probability is the part where he's right. It's not absolute. But probably, yeah, he's absolutely right. More That means more than likely. More than likely, if you've never heard of this game, it's not going to be good. I absolutely agree with that. Does that. Are there occasions where I come across a game that I never heard of and I'm like, oh, this is fantastic? Sure, but how often does that happen to you? If you disagree with this, how often does that happen to you that you come across a game that you've never heard of? You just stumbled upon it like, oh, this shit is fire. No, it, it's once again, that's the reason why it's, call, it's called a hidden gem or games are called sleeper hits. Because gems are rare. Those situations are not common. So once again, IGN deleted this because they're getting a lot of flack for it. But I don't really think he said nothing fucking wrong. A lot of y'all are, are, are a bit, are a bit, you know, sensitive and like kind of letting your hate for IGN, once again, not defending them, kind of blind your logic here. Do you have those, those, those like PC, um, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to call them, uh, dumpster divers. Yeah. There are PC dump, dumpster divers who, who definitely find those gems and find games they love. But generally speaking, that's, that's not common and that's not. What happens? I get sent review codes all the time by like small studios and just no name studios that nobody nobody really knows because I I'm, I'm like signed up for these what these different key websites and stuff like that where they send you key codes and 99% of the time, even when I give the give these games a try, some fucking garbage, some literally some some trash, just some throwaway game that nobody really cares about. Nobody nobody would actually play and you definitely don't want to hear about a hear a, a review about it that's the case the majority of the time so hey man i don't really know what people are mad about um it's 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 kind of freaking true it's it's pretty damn true um it's and like just to confirm this personally for me i haven't done reviews lately right but i used to say all the time if I review a game, that means I beat it. If I beat it, that probably means I like it because I'm not going to beat a game. I'm not going to, I'm generally, there, once again, there are exceptions to everything, but generally I don't beat games that I don't like, that I don't think are good. So if I review a game before you even click on the video, you know, I liked it. Majority of the time, 90% of the time, if I review a game, Oh, BG likes it. You don't even got to click on the review. BG likes it. There you go. So that, that's kind of the same. That's kind of the same thing IGN is, is saying. That's kind of, the, it's kind of the same concept. So listen, let me know what y'all think. Was this guy crazy off base? You know, let me know what y'all think. Um, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, uh, follow me on Twitter, all that good shit. Catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.